Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy, welcome to my channel. And on today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to fake a long exposure. I'm back. Who missed me? Did anyone miss me? No. Why not? I got a couple of mails from Instagram saying you missed lies. Yeah, okay. I know it's been a long time since I've actually posted on here. I think it's about two months since I last posted a video onto YouTube. I do apologize that it's just been getting real hectic with running multiple pages on Instagram now, trying to push different avenues that I'm interested in between design, drumming, and obviously the photography. Um, and we might as well just address this while we're here. I got rid of the beard. It had to go, I got sick of it. Anyone who has a long beard for any length of time will tell you there's a lot of maintenance needed and I'm lazy and this look here, this whole, the, you know, the no hair and the short beard, it's the lazy man's haircut. I do it once a week and that's it. I wake up like this, I go to sleep like this, I'm beautiful every other day. Uh, right, so what are we going to be doing today? Today I'm going to be just showing you something. It's a really easy technique to do. Uh, it's really simple to do. Photoshop makes this so simple for you to do. And in some cases, it'll get you out of a nice wee pinch. Uh, this technically is a photography hack, uh, but a lot of people know about it and some people don't know about it. So I thought I would show you my way and my method to getting this. It's how to fake a long exposure. So how does the technique work? Well, the technique is really simple. Basically, if you want to fake a long exposure, so say you want to fake a 10 second, for easy maths, we'll say you want to fake a 10 second exposure. Well, if you can get your camera in such a light, now this all depends also on the lighting on the day. So if you're there nearly sunset, where it's getting pretty dark, or even early sunrise, and it's dark enough for you to have a one second exposure, but it's too, it's too bright for you to have a 10 second exposure. If you take 10 photos and you combine them together in Photoshop, you will get the equivalent of a 10 second photo when you blend them together. And that's basically what the technique is. You take a series of photos, you blend them together, and through the transparency, they will, they will blur together and they will form an illusion that replicates a long exposure when it comes to moving items like water. Water's a great example, clouds is another great example of stuff that's gonna be moving that can easily blur. Now there are plenty of methods in which for you to do this, you can treat this like a time lapse. So if you have like say an intervalometer or if your camera actually comes with one built in, you can just set up your, your intervals and just say I want to take 20 shots, go, boom, and it'll do 20 shots. Or you can just take 20 photos yourself. If you have a two second timer on your camera, take one, take two, just keep going until you think you have enough. The more the better. You're probably better off shooting more than you need. So just remember, if you want a one second exposure to turn into 10 seconds, you need 10 photos. So if you keep that, keep that in mind, just keep that simple maths in mind at all times. You should be fine, you should be great, and that's it. So let's get into this and see how we actually blend the photos together, because it is really, really simple. It's it's stupid simple. The hardest part on this is your your computer. Blending all of these photos is, is strenuous on your computer. If you don't have a powerful computer, it's gonna be time consuming. So I'm just gonna give you a fair warning on that as well. My computer has started to slow down a little bit, probably because I haven't updated Photoshop or Lightroom since November. So when you're looking at this, this is still the old Lightroom. Bear in mind, uh, I heard so many scare stories of people losing photos and I didn't want to lose mine. So I haven't done it yet, but I will at some stage. Uh, again, like I said, it's the reason why I got rid of my beard. I'm too lazy. So let's get into this and see how we actually take our photos from Lightroom into Photoshop and blend them together. Okay, so this is the photo we're gonna be working on. This is the shot that I took at Downpatrick Head in County Mayo, as you can see. It's an unbelievable looking sea stack uh, just off the coast at County Mayo. And what I wanted to get here was, I wanted to get a nice long exposure, um, but the weather wasn't to be on the day. You can see the rain clouds were here just on the horizon. They ended up coming over us and just covering us in rain. I'll even show you the photo that I tried to get. So you can see here up the top, we're shooting at 120 seconds, so it was two minutes, but with all the rain and the fact that I couldn't clear the, the filter at the front of the camera, it got all fogged up and messed it up. I did try it a second time. I did wipe it down and thought maybe the rain would calm down and I'd get the shot again, so I tried it again. And as you can see from these, for lack of a better word, these are completely washed out. They're useless, unusable, I can do nothing with them. So from that, 
what I did was I took the 10 stop filter off the front of the camera. I still had the polarizer on it. Uh, the polarizer was cutting it down. You can see some of these images here. I was able to get down to 0.4 of a second shooting at f11. So if we can have you on forward and see uh, what was the final ones. You can see there's a little bit of movement. That was because of the heavy wind that I was suffering from at the time. I then stopped down to f16. I was able to get a, a 1.3 second exposure. Now this is giving me lovely movement here, but I did want the option to maybe smooth out the water completely and have a nice long exposure. So what I did think was, if I have 10 photos of this, that would give me 13 seconds. So if I have 20 photos of this, that would give me 26 seconds and so on and so forth. And if we just slide this across here and see how many photos I actually took in total. So if I select them all, shift and click, and you see down the bottom here, you see it says 53 selected. So 53 by about 1.3 seconds. Now some of them did change. If I click through some of these, you will see that they did change. Yeah, 1.5 seconds. Again, the camera is moving because the winds were so heavy. I, even with the ball head I have, it, it, it's a really sturdy tripod. It still moved. This wind was possibly a little bit too extreme for uh, where I was shooting and what I was trying to achieve at this, uh, this shoot. It did get a bit sketchy at times. So we just took as many photos as I could and get out of there as quick as possible. So I'm just gonna go through these photos because I actually can't remember from looking which ones. So I'm just gonna take a few here. I don't think for an example of this, I need to take too many. Um, between 10 and 20 is usually pretty good, I think, especially if you're at a 1.3 second exposure. So if we count 10 here, one, two, three, four, five, to the six, to the seven, to the eight, and to the nine and 10. So there is, 10 photos there, you can see them selected. And what all you basically do is make sure the settings are exactly the same. So if this was the first image you have, do your changes to that, select all the images you want, and then simply hit sync and it's done. Everything's the same, nothing should move. What you do then is you right click, edit in. Now, if you select Photoshop, it'll open them all in separate windows and that is just a pain. So we'll just scroll down to the bottom and we'll go for open as layers in Photoshop. I have Photoshop already open, which will make this a little bit faster. You can see I already had Photoshop open, which kind of speeds up this process a little bit. This can be time consuming depending on how many photos you do take in. So you'll notice on the right hand side, it's going to slowly just bring all the images in and it will just wait here until these all clear through. It'll run them in and we can then align them up properly to make sure there is no movement between them all. And then we can blend all the layers together to get us a nice fake long exposure. Okay, so now we have all 10 photos brought into Photoshop all as layers in Photoshop, so it's all within the one file. If we shift and click all. Now, if your shot didn't move, you don't need to do this next step. If it did, you can. So if you just go up to edit and scroll down to auto align layers and just hit, just leave it on auto, hit okay and Photoshop will do the rest for you. Okay, so that has happened there. Uh, you've noticed there's a little bit of a, a line, you may notice that. Now, it's only a small amount, and if we just control T and resize. What we're gonna do now is hold Shift and Alt down and click and drag from the corner. What that's gonna do is it's gonna constrain the scaling on this, and it's also gonna go from the center, so all the sides are done at the exact same time. So you see the way that is? been scaled up. So we only do need to do it a little bit just to get over the sides. We can get away with it. In this case, usually I would tell you never scale up, but it saves having to crop down. It's all really the same. You can crop down if you want and then hit enter for that. Okay, so everything is lined up. We have no edges now that we have to worry about. And uh, we can clone snap this out at a later stage if we want it, or we can leave it in, doesn't really matter much. I think in the end result, I actually think I painted this out because it's doing nothing for the image. If anything at all, it's actually dragging the, the, the viewer's eye to the corner, which is a distraction, and you kind of want to avoid distractions in your photos as best possible. So you have all your layers selected, keep them selected. What you're going to do now is right click, convert to smart object, and what that does basically is it combines all files into a nice, neat, nested layer, which then you can edit uh, to your heart's content. And you're not gonna actually affect them original images. So this goes back to what I've said in all of my tutorials and what I always try to teach people when I teach them Photoshop, always consider editing in a non-destructive way. So by converting to a smart object, we can do whatever we want. We can change 
We can go into camera raw filter, we can add blurs, we can do whatever we want, resize it to a horrible scale or whatever we want to do, and it's not going to affect the original images. But this is actually vital for, this is where the, this is where the whole trick and magic happens within Photoshop, is when you convert this into a smart object. Okay, so the next step that we need to do, and it's actually the last step that we need to do, is we need to actually blend all these layers together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually get Photoshop to work out the average of all the photos so that they actually changes the opacity from photo to photo. So without getting into all the mats, if you don't wanna know about the mats, just basically go up to layer, smart objects, stack mode, and mean, it's gonna work out, whoop, where did that go to? <laughs> Stack mode and then mean, and that's gonna work out the average between each of the images and it's gonna put in the relevant opacity. So the first image is gonna be 100%, the second image is gonna be 50, because the average between two images is 50%, down to 33%, down to 12%, so on, so on, so on. And there you go. You've just faked your first long exposure. And you can see, it actually does look great. If you look along the rocks with the mist, it actually does look quite authentic to how around about 10 seconds, 30 seconds would look in a long exposure. Um, now, the only thing I did forget to do this was I forgot to keep an original of this just for the tutorial to show you before and after. So I'm just gonna go into Lightroom and actually open just a single one of these again. So right click, edit in. This time it's only gonna give me the option to edit in Photoshop. We just wait. Okay, now, this is gonna be one thing I'm gonna show you as well. For anyone who's wondering if you wanna drag in an image like this, we know that both of them have the same size window. So what you do is you come into the second window, select it, drag it, come up to this window here, and as you hover over here, you will see there's a square, a white square with a plus sign in it. That means it's gonna add it into this Photoshop layer, or file even. If you want this to be centered to the image you're placing it into, hold down shift and it will be centered to it. So we'll let go. So here we go, there's a before and after. So there's the before, that's at 1.3 seconds. And here is 10 photos mixed together to fake a 13 second long exposure. And to be honest, I think that actually looks great. It looks fantastic. In the end, this is the photo I think I went with or something similar to it. Uh, I, I much preferred the movement that was on this than the actual mist just for this one occasion, but it's, you know, at least I had the option there to pick between the ones I, I preferred. And that's always a great thing to consider when you're taking your photographs at a landscape. You know, it's not like you're, you're photographing a model, and even at that, if you're photographing a model, people do take multiple, multiple photos. Peter Hurley is known for taking a couple of hundred photos while he's doing a headshot um, session. And it's the same for your landscape photography. Take a short exposure, take a longer exposure, and you never know which you're gonna prefer on the day. But if you come back to your studio, it's already too late to make a decision on what you should have done on the field. So when it comes to shooting photos, more is more. And there you have it, a really simple photography hack, how to fake a long exposure. Uh, it is quite, it is quite time consuming on your computer, but it's really easy to do. Like Photoshop does all the work for you. And for me, this really is a photography hack that works. A lot of them out there don't work. I've seen people um, turning a plastic bag and using it as a softbox. It, it, it works okay, but then when you compare it against a softbox, you think, no, it doesn't really work that well at all. Um, there's other ones as well I've seen where someone has um, strapped a belt around a camera to, I don't, I don't know, use it as a gimbal or something. Um, I went to try it and nearly dropped the camera. So, you know, I was like, Whoa, if it works, it works. But in this case, this really does work. And it may actually put the argument to some people, do you need ND filters when you have this technique? And I'm gonna leave the debate up to you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. Let me know in the comments, hit a like on the button, subscribe to this channel. I will be doing more videos like this. I'll be doing more gear reviews, some tutorials. You can also catch me on Facebook, Instagram, and my website, my name, plus photography equals.com, markduffyphotography.com. And until the next time, later Gators.